I've managed to cover myself in paint, so that can mean only one thing. We're doing a part three of analog painting. We're doing a part three of analog painting. And the subject, once again, it's cats. This time I kept the scope small by starting with only three canvases. My references were this cat, this cat, and this picture I took in Café Rouge around 2014 with a banana I'd forgotten I had in my bag and put on the plate because it looked ridiculously oversized. And everyone loves a banana gag. Getting very technical using bowls for drawing circles, but I don't have fancy stuff like uh, protractors and things, so it did the job. I do have a ruler though, so I did measure out the page somewhat in half, I guess, and it's sort of lined up. Okay, so hopefully these are more, I, I measured them all. So they should be more accurate now. Well, this one's not measured, but I'm hoping it's a bit more accurate to the picture. And that's a banana, an outsized banana on a plate. So uh, there goes nothing. Very handy. I actually recorded a... Very handy that. I actually recorded some narrative as I was doing it, which uh, saves me doing this overdub now. You can't even see your face. You're just too, just you're just like a shadow. Look, look that way. There. Look at there. This, this way. Background colours. I'm deviating somewhat from the actual picture, but yeah, artistic license and all that. So what I wanted to do was get some straight lines for the outline of the mirror and the picture rail and stuff. So. I actually invested some money, three pounds, in masking tape, so now I can actually do some straight lines. Even with the steadiest hand, sellotape gives you that level of accuracy, you just can't get freewheeling it. So another thing I've used this time, which I didn't do before, was use a hairdryer to accelerate the drawing process. I honestly don't know why I didn't use it before, because it's a massive time saver. And instead of waiting for the paint to dry, literally, you can give it a quick blast with the hairdryer. It's a game changer. Just to prove how awesome it is, here's some footage of me actually drying something with the hairdryer. You can see it drying real time, it's fantastic. And as long as it's not shiny, you know it's good to paint on again, so you can carry on right away, rather than, uh, I think the reason I had about six paintings on the go last time was because I was waiting for stuff to dry, so I'd start another painting while I was waiting for the other one to dry, whereas now you can pretty much work on it straight away. You paint the stuff, dry it, carry on painting again. Brilliant. See, so here is the moment of truth, pulling off the sellotape, and it's mostly worked. Because it's canvas and it has texture, there is a bit of bleed, but that's acceptable, and it still means you've got a really good straight line. Skipping forward a bit now, I've painted all the backgrounds for the three paintings, and painted a bit of detail like the plate and the, well, the mirror thing in the uh, in the first cat picture. So it's uh, a bit of blending. And the paint's thin enough here to still see the pencil mark through it so I can still see the construction lines and uh, not make the, uh, not make the proportions really wonky like last time. So the first base colors for the cats are in and I'm gonna build up on top of this by adding subsequent layers of fur and detail and texture and stuff on top of this base color. Here I've added a base color on the banana and the fork is looking a bit odd. I'll spend some time fixing that. So here I've added the first layer of fur to the cats and I'm trying to decide where to put the eyes. I quite like the simplicity of the fur at this stage and probably should have left it like this. So here's one really advanced technique, turning the painting upside down. Here I'm adding some edges to things, which I said I wouldn't do, but I am doing because what the hell. Yes, I know, to the purists, it's cheating, but uh, I'm just an edgy kind of person. Banana, tabby cat, and the tuxedo cats are all Getting there nicely, I guess. 
three seconds is about as much jazz as you can have before I get a copyright strike. So um, just pretend you're listening to some uh, smooth, easy listening while I'm uh, doing some gratuitous edging here on this cat. I know this looks really professionally shot, but I'm actually holding a phone in one hand and trying to draw with the other one. So I'm not actually sure what I'm pointing the phone at half the time. So, so for the edging here, I could tell you that everything is planned and I have a very lofty kind of technical reason why I'm doing the colors I'm doing with tertiary colors and warm shades and all this kind of stuff. But in reality, what I'm actually doing is not wasting paint. So I'll have some banana colored yellow paint on the palette and rather than letting it go to waste and drying out on the palette, I'm going to use that color and uh, give the cat a yellow halo because uh, I think it looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> Even better upside down. Nearing the end of the painting session, I had some advice from a local critic who gave me some very welcome feedback. That looks very cute. Is it? Which one? That one? Yeah, Felix. Oh yeah. Felix is very cute. Though there doesn't appear to be much difference on the cats, I have done some more on the banana background and then added some highlights and all that kind of stuff. The tines on the fork look more akin to a garden tool than to a uh, fine dining implement, so they need some work still. So for anyone watching this who isn't a painter, red as a pigment is notoriously thin. So when you're painting stuff, unlike other colours, you'll always see through it, it's slightly transparent. And so like if you're building up layers on top of things like pencil lines and stuff, if you're using a high pigment white, that will get rid of the lines almost immediately, but with the red, you've got to keep painting back over with white and then red to then get the pencil lines to go away. So the cat's pretty much finished at this point. I've added the eye highlights and stuff, and they're pretty much good to go, I think, with the edges and stuff. They look pretty tidy. Uh, won't mess around with those too much. And then the banana. Try and ignore the shorts and sock combination. This is my painting outfit. I think the banana and the plate look good, but the fork looks horrible. So the obvious thing to do is to ignore the fork completely and start masking off and painting in a checkerboard on the background because that will make the painting better. So that's what I did. Of all the video I recorded this day, I seem to have the most footage of me doing this bit, masking off and painting squares. And now comes the moment of truth, pulling the tape off. That was a cool 20 minute diversion, and I still haven't fixed the fork. So I painted over it again, but it still doesn't look great because the proportions are wrong, but at this stage, uh, I'll call it done. Here's the first can I painted a few weeks ago versus the can I painted now with some reference. I can see there's a bit of an improvement somewhat, I guess, in the style. <laughs> So there you go, until next time, that was um, Analog Painting Part 3. Uh, continuing in the cat theme, there will be Part 2 coming up shortly of a animation I made for the Endless Engines competition, which is also a cat version of Raoul Duke from Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas as a cat in a car being chased by bats. That's coming up next. So here are the finished paintings, and I'll see you next time.